What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the undefeated post weigh-in show. It's Friday. It's the best betting show of the week. I'm your boy Clint from the Die Hard MMA podcast, and we are talking UFC 275. You may notice that I've got some new threads. I'm rocking the Kai Kara France t-shirt. Check this bad boy out. Look at that. So thank you. Shout out to my guy, Sean Knuckle. Sean, I have not been ignoring you. I just wanted to surprise you by wearing the shirt on the show. So that's why I haven't messaged you back on Twitter. Thanks again, buddy. I appreciate it. Hey, I got a surprise for all of you today. It's not much of a surprise because I already tweeted about it. But <laughs> we are being joined by Andrew from Superbook Sports to give us a little bit of a peek behind the counter for this big pay-per-view card. So, Andrew, thank you very much for jumping in and joining us today. How are you doing, man? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of your show. I uh, look forward to doing this with you, man. Yeah, man. Right back at you. My pleasure. I had to rock the uh, the Superbook Sports hat and rep the, uh, rep the team here today. <laughs> like it. I'm digging the shirt, too. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty stoked about this shirt. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, man. So, hey, we are talking UFC 275. Let's jump straight on into it. For anybody, if it's your first time watching, what I do is I take a look at the fighters when they get on the scales. I watch them face off, and I'll let you know what I see. If we find anything where we can maybe extract a little bit of extra value, a bad weight cut, somebody looking afraid of their opponent, we talk through all those things. And then it also just gives me an opportunity to kind of recap my thoughts from Monday from that show where I broke everything down all the way until Friday. Hey, sometimes things change. First fight of the night. We got Jocelyn Edwards taking on Ramona Pascal. It looks like Jocelyn came in at 145. Ramona also made 145 on the dot. Um, Jocelyn went full Israel out of Sonya. She did the dyed pink hair thing. It looked pretty good on her. I'm not going to lie. No issues for her whatsoever. She looked great. She's up a weight class, obviously, so no tough cut or anything like that. Her opponent, Ramona, came in. She's looking thick. That's not a bad thing. She looks very well filled out at 145. This was an intense face-off, a good stare down. Ramona's got tree trunk thighs, man. That's the big noticeable difference between these two fighters. Height-wise, it's about the same. Upper body thickness, it's about the same. But Ramona has got some running back thighs on her, and I think that makes the difference here. Hey, I haven't budged on this one. Andrew, I made a bet. I'm on Ramona. I got her a little earlier in the week. I think I got plus 140 is the line that I tweeted out there. I think the grappling upside we've seen Edwards controlled and taken down before by smaller opponents. I think Ramona can kind of surprise some people and do that. What are your thoughts on this fight? And have you seen anything on the other side of the counter as far as this first fight of the night goes? We have got a couple bets on the dog in this fight. But uh, I know a few guys in the back. They like the favorite. They like Edwards. Oh. So, but there's not too much action yet. I'm thinking there might be a little bit more before the fight, maybe tomorrow. But thus far, not too much action on this fight. Okay. So a little bit of money coming in on the dog. The yeah. uh, <laughs> bookmakers like the favorite. Makes me a little bit nervous. What about you, though? Personally, which side do you fall on this one? I, I would lean Edwards, but I haven't bet it yet. I'm thinking about placing a bet on Edwards, but maybe you could talk me out of it. <laughs> hey man I'm, I'm not here to talk anybody out of anything i just this one of those spots where i think ramona is a little underrated she took her ufc debut fight on short notice her record doesn't look impressive but she's at a good gym she's got the physicality she's athletic she can take a punch she's got heart for days we saw that in her first fight and on short notice she was able to go 15 minutes and take a beating with no problem I just got to imagine what she looks like on a full training camp. I think she can come in with a game plan, much better prepared, with a better gas tank, which means more intensity, probably more offensive success. I just think she can kind of surprise some people here. Okay. So that's my thoughts on it. Moving right along, second fight of the night. Uh, I'm shocked they didn't start the night off with this one, man. Silvana gomez Juarez taking on Na Liang. Both women made 116. No issues from either side on this one. Good face-off. Na was not whatsoever bothered by the intensity of Silvana Gomez. This fight's going to be an absolute war as long as it lasts, man. I I'm tempted to take the shot on Na. I think she can submit Silvana Gomez. We know Gomez doesn't defend arm bars very well, if at all. And she's had the her arm snapped in her last two fights back to back. That's what Na does. She takes people down. She's a bat out of hell early in round one. And if you can survive round one, she's kind of helpless to defend herself. I think violence is the way to look on this one if you want to take a shot on the under or the fight doesn't go the distance something along those lines that's maybe the way to go looking at the lines at superbook 
I think some money has come in here on the dog. She was hanging around plus 120 basically all week. She's even money now, minus 120 on Silvana Gomez. Uh, talk to me about this one, man. What happened there? You're exactly right. Yeah, we've been taking some action on the dog in this fight and the under. So it looks like uh, the people do agree with you in this fight. And I don't really have too much of an opinion on this one. But, uh, I mean, the dog seems like where the money is coming. All right. Hey, I'm all good with that. That's the side I've been leaning all week. I'm a little disappointed because I didn't pull the trigger at plus 120. <laughs> and now she's now she's even money. But the one thing that I would really like on her is the sub prop. Now, for whatever reason, a couple of the fights don't quite have props up yet at Superbook Sports. So I don't have a line to quote for Liang Na by submission. Uh, she's floating around there plus 215, plus 230, something like that at some of the other books that I've seen. And I think that's probably her best path to victory. I kind of like that. Any thoughts on the way this thing finishes or anything like that? Uh, not really. I mean, like I said, they're they're betting the under, so I'm, I'm guessing that people are agreeing with you. And I'll uh, take a look when I get back uh, out there to see if I could get those props back up for you to bet. There we go. <laughs> that's my guy right there. We got the inside track. Let's <laughs> get those props up. All right, man. Next flight up. Dana Batgari taking on Kyung Ho Kang. And uh, looks like Dana came in at 135 on the dot. Kang needed that extra pound, 136. Dana Batgari is jacked, dude. This guy gave a massive, intense flex on the scales. Kyung looked solid, honestly. He's, you know, they call him Mr. Perfect for a reason. He looked good up there on the scales today. Slight height advantage for Kyung Ho Kang. Dana obviously has the thickness advantage. And this was a good, intense face-off. These guys are both really ready to go to work here. I've seen some serious opinions on both sides of this fight, but it's been a consistent uh, push on the underdog from what I've seen. Kang is all the way down to plus 105. Dana is minus 125 as the favorite. I haven't made a bet here. I kind of lean over, and I kind of lean to the favorite here in Dana. I think everyone's a little down on him after his last fight, but the market does not agree with me. Andrew, did you guys get hit on the uh, Kang side, I assume? This one, we've kind of just been following the market. We actually don't have a lot of action on this fight. This is uh, probably the most dead fight out of all of them so far. Really? Yeah. This is uh, There's not a lot of action. We took a couple bets on the dog, so that's maybe why we moved it down, but not too much action for this fight. But I'm okay. with you. I kind of like the favorite in this fight. I'm with you. Right? I kind of like the favorite. Okay, I'm glad you agree with me. I mean, this is it, it's a spot where he's coming off a knockout loss. That's never pretty. Nobody ever likes that. But Kang is a primary grappler with a 17 and 9 record. Like, I just don't see him causing too much issue for Dana. And I think everyone is just expecting him to be able to clip him and hurt him and put him down the way Gutierrez did. Gutierrez made him chase him for 12 minutes and then hit him with a spinning elbow. Like, that's not Kang is never doing that. That's not the game plan. If you think Kang can take this guy down and, and grind on him for 15 minutes, okay. But blanket control time is not something we're seeing get awarded by the judges very recently. I think this fight could be close, and I think it's probably going over favorite or pass for me, man. I'm I'm kind of on the Dana side. The lower this price gets, the more interested I am. All righty. All right. And I love hearing you say that you guys moved it with the market because that's something from the betting side of things. You know, when we see the line shift and the numbers move, yeah. we just assume it's like, oh, somebody walked in and, and went down hard on Kyung Ho Kang. But you're saying that you guys basically just saw the rest of the market move and you're kind of shifting along with it, right? Don't want to get stuck on something you don't have a great opinion on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. It's just, uh, you know, for me leaning with the favorite, it's always interesting to see that it's like, oh, okay. Like uh, we're just kind of tailing, tailing everybody else at, on that one. I shouldn't be too spooked then. <laughs> I don't think right. that the, the most sought after fight on the card. So I'm sure we'll get some more late action coming yeah. in tomorrow. We got time. We got time. All right, man. Next flight up, Brendan Allen taking on Jacob Malkoon. Both guys made 186. Brendan Allen rocking the dead animal on his head. That's always a good sign for us uh, superstitious betters. We love it when they come in with the uh, the animals on his head. But he was having fun, gave a big woo on the scales. Uh, Jacob Malkoon, no issues from him whatsoever. He's just a big, hairy man. <laughs> Slight size advantage in this one goes to Brendan Allen. Malkoon had his shoes on and was still a decent bit shorter than him. So there's a large size difference here. But this was an intense face-off. Nobody wanted to be the first guy to back down. 
you know, Jacob Malkoon is a guy that I have not had a ton of success with predicting his fights so far in the UFC. This is a big jump up in competition for him. And I've seen some love online for the underdog here. However, the line seems to be moving the other direction. What do you guys have behind the counter there? Yeah, this is one where they're betting the favorite. They're laying the, the juice on the favorite for sure. Um, we're not taking many bets on the on the dog here. Brennan Allen seems like he's taking all the money. In my opinion, I I might take a shot on the dog. I seen uh, some people online talking about the dog too, but at the book we're taking no money thus far. Okay, all right. So yeah, that's a, it's been a big big move on Brennan Allen. I personally agree with it. I kind of felt like it was a favorite or pass spot, but again. Two guys I haven't had personally the best read on. So, you know, I'm going to side with the favorite. I kind of have sided with the favorite all week. I was a little tempted on the dog early on, but I just don't think I need to get involved in this one, man. Yeah. I think this one I'm fine to, you know, if you want to parlay the favorite and not put a whole lot of investment on it and sit back and watch, I think that's maybe the move. Some people like Malkoon by decision. It's like, eight to one or something like that that's really his only path to victory here so if you're gonna play the dog you might as well get the extra juice on that prop i don't mind that whatsoever yeah we're up to three dollars on the fight it opened all the way down at 210 so yeah yeah that's a hefty move mm -hmm. all right all right steve garcia taking on mahashate both guys came in at 155 and a half steve garcia no issues for him never the most physically imposing fighter uh, Mahashate came in and looked very relieved when they called his weight. This is a big dude, big size advantage when these guys faced off. Mahashate is going to be a decent bit larger than Garcia. Garcia's got that dog in him, though, man. He was not backing down at those faceoffs. This is a fight that I'm a little disappointed in myself for. I feel like I, I just kind of messed it up from start to finish. I leaned towards Garcia earlier in the week, and I could have gotten a better number, but the line moved Garcia's way in a big, big way and i just don't want to lay minus 175 on him here he's the smaller guy he's fighting in the in the other guy's home territory so if it's a close fight the judges are gonna probably side with his opponents and then on top of that he got dropped three times in his last fight three and not many people survived that kind of a beating so going up against another large imposing physical fighter this thing could be a banger and at the current line i've kind of flopped over to dog or pass no bet for me on this one andrew but do you have an opinion on the fight or have you seen any type of notable action on it 75 is uh, not a terrible number we're up to 90 here in vegas oh. so uh we've only been taking money on the favor in this fight so wow. they, uh, they're agreeing with you we opened at 150 it's all the way up to 190 so Okay. And do you have any differentiation between like respected betters or is it just straight up money? Have you had anybody that you guys like really look for that has placed any of these bets here this week so far? Thus far in these lower, the lower card, there hasn't been any sharp action. It's all a uh, uh, public action and okay. we got some coming up in these later fights, but all right on these yet. That's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. We'll we'll talk about that when we get there. You let me know. <laughs> I know that's what the people want. Of course, of course. All right, man. Uh, next fight up, Sung Woo Choi taking on Joshua Kuli Bao. We've got 146 on the scale for both fighters here. Uh, Sung Woo Choi was amped up today. Extremely energetic. Um, so was Joshua Kuli Bao. These guys are amped up and ready to fight, but Choi was shredded. Holy crap, did this kid put some work in. I don't think I've ever seen him in this kind of shape before. Like, he looked really, really good today. When they faced off, uh, Sung Woo Choi kind of hit Josh Kalibau with the uh, pump fake on the face off. Like, got right up to him and then was like, oh, wait, let me go get my pants. And, like, walked away, puts his pants on, comes back. Joshua Kalibau went forehead to forehead with him. Like, these guys are ready to throw down. I cannot wait for this fight. Man, okay, so... What I have done recently, something that has really bitten me in the ass, is I've spotted these fighters that I really like, and I've said they've got a future, I'm going to get on them, we're going to bet them, and then when they drop the ball, for whatever reason, in their next fight, suddenly I seem to, in my own mind, rate them just a little bit lower, and I take a shot against them, and uh. then afterwards I'm sitting there going, what is wrong with me? Like They roll right through the guy that I bet against them with, 
because of course, like I was right the first two, three times we talked about them. They are a good prospect. They are a talented fighter, but I got a little bit recency biased and, and try to fade them their next fight after a loss. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I talked all week about maybe wanting to bet Joshua Kaliba in this spot. I felt like he was getting a little disrespected. Line might be a little too wide, but I've been a Choi guy his entire run. Like I've been looking to bet on Choi every single fight out. I lay the wood with him and he somehow gets climbed like a freaking tree against Alex Caceres and choked out once. And all of a sudden I'm ready to bet against him. I'm not doing it, Andrew. So this is a spot where I have talked myself off the ledge. I was going to take the dog shot on Joshua Kalibau. At the end of the day, I'm rolling with my boy, Sung Woo Choi. I'm probably not going to bet this fight. If I do, maybe all the, you know, the Hail Mary parlay where I've got, you know, all my favorites that I think are going to win piled up in it for a small bet or something. No big investment from me, but I'm going to go ahead and side with my guy, Sung Woo Choi. What do you got going on over there? Another low action fight, but there's some parlay money coming in on Choi. No sharp action, just... Basically what you said, some people are trying to parlay him, so maybe <laughs> a parlay or two, but nothing on the over-under either. I mean, it's a low-action fight thus far. Okay, okay. Man, this is one of those ones where I don't want to just be, you know, king casual sitting over here, but I was kind of leaning toward this fight going over after watching the way these guys faced off. I'm kind of thinking under <laughs> the intensity of that stare down. Uh, I, I definitely think these guys are both coming in with some bad intentions. So I think this is going to be a fun fight for sure. And next up, we've got the one everybody's been waiting for. Jack Della Maddalena taking on Ramazan Amiv. This has been kind of the Twitter civil war this week, man. There's people who are believing in Jack Della. There's people who are saying this is the opportunity to fade him. It's a big step up in competition with Ramazan Amiv. The line has essentially flipped from when it opened way back when. And Jack looked jacked on the scale today. He is in excellent shape, had a lot of energy. We all know how his gas tank works, so that's not overly surprising. Ramazan Amiv did not look bad. He gave the one-arm victory fist pump up there today. This was a good, respectful face-off, and these guys size up extremely well. Man, I've been, I've been fighting hard with myself on this one because I think Jack Della is the side. I want to bet on Jack Della, but I missed the good number. I missed him as a dog. I missed him at even money. I could have gotten a much better number if I had looked a little further ahead on this fight. So I find it difficult to justify jumping in now when he's minus 155. But I do think he's the side. I do think he wins. And I'm a complete degenerate, so I might still find a way to bet it even at a bad number at some point before the fights kick off, man. Uh, what about you? Are you on Jack's side, or are you guys thinking uh, thinking maybe he takes that first veteran lesson here in the UFC on Saturday? So personally, I originally thought Amiv was the side, but the money's all coming in on, on Jack, and there's been some sharp action on Jack. So I, I haven't placed a bet, but... The action's all looking like it's on the favorite right now. Okay. So you don't have any buyback or anything on, on the dog? No, we, we have some bets. We have some bets. But there's, oh, okay. there's most of the action is on the favorite for this fight. And there's a couple sharp betters on the, the favorite as well. Okay, so some of the some of the sharp action guys that we were looking for the report for are on Jack Della. Man, I might have to jump in. I might that, have to jump in. That's why you see a change in the line for this one. For sure. For sure. Okay. All right. Fair enough, man. Next up, Andre Fialo taking on Jake Matthews. Cannot wait to hear what you've got to say about this one. This one comes in, uh, both guys, 170 and a half. They both needed that extra half pound. Andre Fialo is so freaking big, man. Dude is jacked on the scales today. I was hoping he would have a little bit of trouble. It's his third weight cut in three months. Unfortunately, he looked fantastic. So anybody on the Fialo side, I can't give you a bad report here. Jake Matthews, he looks solid as well. He is really filled out at 170. Like he did not used to be this big of a guy. He has definitely put some work in on that strength and conditioning routine. This was a crazy intense face-off. And Jake Matthews actually is the slightly bigger man. That may surprise some people expecting him not to have the size advantage. But in this case, he does. Um, I've got thoughts on this one, but I actually think I want to kick it over to you first and see what the report is on the, the other end of the counter here, Andrew. What do you got on this one? So I've been following your stuff on social media, so I, I know who you're all over, and it's kept me away from betting this because originally I thought Fialo. I like that side, but 
the action, everything is uh, agreeing with you right now. We have no no sharp action on the fight, but most of the betters are all taking Jake Matthews. And the line has come back down a little bit, uh, Matthews' way. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure where I lean in this fight anymore. I, I like <laughs> Diallo originally, and now I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to place a bet on this one. Okay, all right. No, man, I think this is just your classic fade the public spot. Andre Fialo <laughs> has looked so good recently. He's knocked out a couple of cans, and he's got his first, his third fight in three months, traveling across the country, the extra weight cut. Like, there's just a lot of factors, in my opinion, that go against Fialo. And at the end of the day, when he made his UFC debut, we saw that you can just kind of stick and move this guy. You know, Pereira was able to just keep the distance, keep the range, frustrate him without letting him land a big bomb. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. If you don't let him use that power, you can easily outwork this guy. People forget how technical of a boxer Jake Matthews is. He's going to have a speed advantage. I think he's going to have a footwork advantage. And uh, he's got like a 61% striking defense. So he's not an easy guy to hit. He's also never been knocked out. He's a guy that gets submitted when he faces higher caliber grapplers than himself but he isn't a guy that you put away with one hitter quitter shots or at least historically he hasn't been so yeah man i'm i'm big on the dog side on this one this is my uh this week's plant the flag spot where i either go home crying or i go home with a pile <laughs> um for the people though i loaded up i've got three units on jake matthews straight because i expect him to win i've got uh, two units on the under two and a half, 2.6 units to win two. That's kind of a semi hedge bet because I do expect Jake Matthews to be able to finish Andre Fialo. And if he doesn't, if Fialo's winning this fight, it's not going to be by decision. So if Fialo gets it done, you know, I should get at least two units back. It's almost a little rebate on my Matthews bet if Fialo gets it done because it'll be an early KO. And then I did go ahead and guys, this is where I love Superbook Sports. I'm not just repping the hat. I'm not just selling out. They've got some of the best prop lines we've ever seen. Jake Matthews KO is 13 to 1 over at Superbook Sports. It's 10 to 1 everywhere else. So I'm getting an extra three, $3 here on my prop bet. So I got the knockout prop at 13 to 1 for Jake Matthews. I like it. Going nuts on it, man. This is my spot. That's my spot. All right. We're getting to the good stuff here. We've got Joanna John Jacek making her return here against Wiley Zhang. Both women weighed in at 116. Um, big, heavy, deep breaths on the scale this morning from Joanna. That was something to note that she did not look particularly comfortable up there. Very uh, relieved smile after they called the weight. Now, I don't think that that has anything to do with you know the fight. She's not going to be compromised or anything like that. She's been gone for a couple of years, so it might have just been some nerves, some jitters. Uh, Wiley Zhang looked like an absolute tank up there, though. Very solid. JJ went back to the boogie woman, man. She did the whole crouch and get in your face thing, trying to intimidate Zhang, and it uh, did not work. Zhang was completely unfazed by Joanna. This is such a fun fight, man. And I've again another one where I've been back and forth. So I was in the Joanna camp in the first fight, and I said that if they ever ran it back, I would put my money where my mouth was, line straight back up, and bet the dog again because I felt like the fight was close. It was competitive. That was the value side. And I have yet to pull the trigger. The closer we get to fight time, I don't know what it is, but there's this pit in my stomach that I'm like, man, I think Zhang is just going to go two for two here. I think that coming off the long layoff for Yuana, she's got the modeling thing going on. I don't know how invested she is in the fight career at this point. Like these are all narrative things. Not something I can really put a number to, but I feel like Zhang is the hungrier fighter, and I just can't envision her going on an 0-3 skid. After being the belt holder, I don't think she's going to go 0-3. I think she finds a way to bounce back here in this spot. So my lean is Zhang, but I have not made a bet. How do you feel about this one? I agree with you. I actually went to the first fight, and I had my money on Joanna, hmm. but I don't know if I'm... It's because of the last time I bet it that I'm on Zhang. <laughs> got but, burned. Yeah, I got burned. But book-wise, uh, we're getting a lot of parlay action on Wiley Zhang. Uh, we've taken a few bets on Joanna. Not too much action yet, mostly parlays. But a part of me wants to bet Zhang here, but I don't know if I'm going to do it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, close to I, gotcha. I might fire late action while we're watching. <laughs> Watch I hear you, man. No, I, this one, it feels like a close fight, right? I, and what we see with rematches, though, is it's never quite the same as the first fight. So 
as much as that first fight was like a ticky tack back and forth close type of fight, look at like uh Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueredo is a perfect example where like the first fight and the second fight were massively different. One goes the full 25 minutes with a point deduction, it's a scrap, and then the other one it's over in the third round. Like we may not see a decision on this one. One of these girls may come out, make the right adjustments, and then finish the other one. I mean, it's really hard to predict this fight, in my opinion. Yeah. Two, what is it, two years off for Joanna? Yeah. A long time off. Yeah. Have you guys seen anything on the total as far as action goes on this one? Because, it, I mean, it's a women's MMA fight, so pretty heavily juiced to the over. Have you gotten any real bets there? We got some bets on the over. Only bets on the over. They're betting the over like crazy. So Okay. All I right, so the market thinks it's going. Either, though I kind of agree with you. I would not be surprised if e e if either of them got a finish. I wouldn't be shocked. I'm with you. That's kind of why I haven't moved on it. Like I I think it's probably going over too, but I'm I'm not running anybody over to lay minus three hundred on the over today. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, we are headed to the co main event. Valentina Shevchenko taking on Tyler Santos. Shevchenko came in at 124 and a half. No issues for her on the scale today. Tyler Santos made 125 on the dot. Championship weight made by both fighters. Uh, Talia Santos looks solid up there today. No issues. And she does have a size advantage. You know, this is one of those things you never really know until they get face to face. But Tyler Santos does look to be the bigger, more physically imposing fighter. However, Val was extremely confident and intense today. Uh, she promised to finish Tyler Santos in the promo. She talked about lining them up. She's going to break them all. She's on a mission. Tyler Santos up there trying to like tap her chin with the left hand and showing her her fist. Like This was a good face-off, man. I cannot wait for this fight. I did go ahead and get down two units inside the distance on the champion valentina shevchenko i'm i believe her you know if she says she's gonna go out there and finish somebody i'm lining up right behind her to say yes i agree she can do it uh massive step up for tyla santos what have you guys seen behind the counter because i've seen this number jumping around a little bit so this is one of them where we got one of our sharpest betters on the dog here and Ooh. i i don't really see it i mean it's hard to go against valentina with everything she's done i'm a big yeah. fan Chanko. um but it i mean this guy's a winner so it might not be a bad little play on uh santos well that's a little terrifying but uh yeah man i have a hard time seeing valentina lose in the form that she's in right now and i know there's a lot of there's a lot of discussion out there right now about how the last couple people she's fought are kind of cupcakes not really the highest level of competition that kind of thing but the exact same thing can be said for Tyler Santos. She hasn't really beaten anybody that's blown us away or anything like that. So I don't think there's any reason to really confidently steer away from the champion in this spot. Yeah. We got some sharp money also on the over. Um, took a few bets on the under, but most of the money is on the over, and we did take a couple sharp bets on the over. So, Okay. Good to know. All right, man. Thank you very much for the report. Main event time. Here's the big one. Glover Teixeira taking on Jiri Prochaska. We've got 205 on the dot for both men. Glover, honestly, man, looked great. For a 42-year-old man up there on the scales making 205 pounds, he looked fantastic. Gave a good solid flex, stone cold up there on the scales. Jiri, though, absolute freak of nature. This guy is jacked, and uh, this was a great face-off, man. Glover was not phased whatsoever. Jiri's obviously got that size advantage. This fight is going to be a battle. I cannot wait for this one. I've got a little bit of action on the under here in this fight, but that's basically it. I, I'm kind of leaning with the champion. I think it's disrespectful to make the current seated champion an underdog, and we see them come through in that role so often that I'm a little tempted on like a blind dart throw on Glover to share it, but I think the under makes far more sense that one way or another – I don't see this fight making it past round three. How about you guys? What What are your thoughts personally on the fight? And then what kind of action have you guys seen on the main event? So personally, uh, I'm rooting for Jerry, but my mind is telling me to bet on Glover. I, I'm with you. I think Glover, if he takes him down, Jerry's in a lot of trouble. Um, the public is all over the favorite here. Uh, they're thinking we're going to have a new champion, but one of our sharpest bettors bet on the dog, so Ooh. on the champion. So 
he also bet him by submission as well a couple times. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's the, in my opinion, that's the move, man, because get, getting four and a half to one on Glover to win, which is, you know, his clearest path to victory in this fight against a guy who has no ground game. I mean, did did you see, like, Henry Cejudo's comments earlier in the week? Oh, uh, what? No. So, Jerry went out to train at Fight Ready oh, oh, before yeah. this fight. Which everybody's thinking that's a great thing, right? Like, if you're going to go fight a guy whose ground game is his best tool, call up Henry Cejudo. Right. Get that ground game sharpened up. And Henry goes, yeah, he came out. I wish he would have worked on his wrestling more. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, ha -ha. Too. <laughs> So if, uh, if the guy that's supposed to be helping you prep is like, shit, bro, you should have done more wrestling. Like, to me, I'm like, big – Big red flag. I might end up throwing a little something on Glover and get some Glover by submission in my name by Saturday. <laughs> are you on it yet, or you haven't played this fight yet? I haven't played it. I'm just on the under. So what I actually did is uh, I took some alternative lines. I've got under three and a half in the main event. Uh, I think it goes under two and a half, but like I bought the extra round just to be safe. And then I went over one and a half in the Valentina Shevchenko Tyler Santos fight. So unless one of them just gets nuked early in the first round, I'm pretty confident that cashes. Like I think we're going to get a round 1 or round 2 finish in the main event. And then I wouldn't be even though I'm on Valentina inside the distance, I'm kind of expecting it to be a championship rounds type of fight, like late third, early fourth, you know, if Talia Santos can't keep up the kind of pace she needs to in the championship rounds, like that's when we'll see a finish. Um, so I'm trying to kind of hit that sweet spot of under one over the other. <laughs> All right. Well, man, I got to say thank you very much, Andrew, for jumping on and giving us the uh, behind the counter look here for UFC 275. Uh, I got your handle right there for people to see here up on screen. But if you want to give them a shout out, let people know where they can find you. Or I don't know if you do any other appearances or anything like that. Uh, now's your, your time. Go ahead and let the people know. <laughs> first appearance and this is my first media i've ever done so uh, i'm a big fan of your show man and keep up the good work i know you have the support of all the guys back here uh we all enjoy your show so keep it up i appreciate you having me on and i look forward to doing this again hopefully sometime thanks a ton andrew that appreciate that that means a lot to me with you guys behind the counter cheering for me over there seriously and i'm sure you and i will probably be doing this kind of a show again especially for these bigger fun pay-per-view cards hey everybody that is the undefeated post way in show make sure you smash the like button head on over to superbook sports subscribe here to pub sports radio if you haven't already good luck on all your degenerate action tomorrow and of course let's roll see you guys